Okay, so today we're going to be doing a quick lecture um, on inheritance patterns or inheritance trends. Okay, so if we were given a pedigree, uh, we would have to determine whether or not it's autosomal dominant, recessive, mitochondrial, Y-linked, X-linked recessive, or X-linked dominant. Okay, so we're going to go through um, some of the, the key points that we're going to look at in order to determine which one. Okay, so the first thing, the, the easiest way is really looking at is there some type of bias in terms of male and female? Um, and if so, who gets it more, okay? And that'll help us a lot. And also, whether or not it skips a generation or not. Um, and so we'll see that in autosomal dominant, we have no bias. So there's no bias. Males and females will both have an equal chance of getting the disease, okay? And it does not skip generations, okay? So what does that mean? All right, so that means that if the grandmother has it, um, then somebody, in the, the kids will have to have it, and then those kids will have to have it, all right? Versus recessive, it can skip generations. So it can go, the grandmother has it, but the kids don't have it, but then the grandkids have it, all right? Um, so we'll see right here, autosomal recessive means there's no bias, um, but it can skip generations, all right? And that's all we really need to see in terms of autosomal uh, dominant and recessive. Those are pretty easy to, dis um, to, to notice. All right? um, so an example would be, for example, uh, for autosomal recessive, if the grandmother has it, then all the way down here, the, the grandson has it. You know, you skip generations. Um, there really is no bias in terms of um, sexes, who, who gets it over another, because a female has it and a male has it. Um, so that's pretty obvious for autosomal recessive. All right. um, the next one we're going to be looking at is mitochondrial. All right. um, so mitochondrial, the first thing we have to notice is that mitochondrial are passed on um, from the mother. All right. All right. The, the mom always um, passes on the mitochondria because when the sperm and egg fuse, the, the sperm's mitochondria aren't actually passed on to the next generation. So all, my, our, all of our mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA is from uh, the mother. Okay? And just remember that the mitochondria has a unique genome that is different from our own um, genome that, from, from the rest of our body. Okay? Um, so it's passed on by the mom. Um, and if a mom has it, then all her children will have to have it. Okay? So for example, um, in this case, if the mom has it, all her kids will have to have it, okay? No matter what, her, all her kids will have to have it. The next thing that we're gonna look at um, is Y-linked, and these are um, our sex chromosomes, right? So we have an X and we have a Y chromosome, X and Y, okay? So Y is, um, so XY is actually a male, and XX equals female. Um, so we're looking only specifically at the Y-linked um, diseases. Right? So it's passed on from the father to the son. Right? And it's all the sons, not just one of them. Um, and the reason why is because this Y um, chromosome is passed on onto all the sons. So if that Y chromosome is diseased, all the sons will have it. Right? So that would look something like this. So the father's disease, all his sons have the disease and none of the females have the disease. And we see already that when we deal with sex chromosomes, that's when we have this bias. Okay, so sex chromosomes will have a, a bias in terms of the sexes that have it. So sex bias. So um, you'll see that more males will have the disease um, in most of the sex chromosome um, diseases. All right? um, so now we're going to be looking at X-linked recessive. All right? So the first thing you want to know is that is there a bias? And the answer is yes. Um, so there's a greater amount of males that have the disease than the females. Um, and does it skip generations or does it go through every single generation? And we remember from before, recessive is the one that is allowed to skip generations. Right? So it can skip generations. So what would that look like um, in this case right here? Um, so I'm going to write in this right here. So let's say that the mother is, um, is heterozygous, for the, heterozygous for the disease. And obviously, if the father is not diseased, we know that his genome has to be, um, he has to have the, the recessive allele, the non-disease for the, for the X chromosome. Because if he had um, the diseased one, he would automatically have the disease. All right? um, so if we look at this, we would see that one half of the sons would have the disease because 
they would get this Y chromosome from the father and they would have a 50% chance of getting one or the other disease or non disease from the mother. Um, but we would see that the, the, the daughter would have a one quarter chance. And so in this case, none of the daughters had the disease. It just happened to be the case. Um, so this would be an example of X linked recessive. Okay? It can skip generations. It doesn't have to be every single successive generation has the disease. Okay? We contrast that to X linked dominant. We still see that more males are going to have the disease than females, but it cannot skip generations. Okay? So what does that mean? So um, let's say that the, the mom in this case again has the disease. Um, well, she has the same genome, but now she has the disease because it's X linked dominant. So anytime you have one of the dominant uh, one of the disease um, genes and it's a dominant gene, that means that they'll have the disease. Okay? So in this case, we're going to see um, that the two sons have the disease again um, and, and it has to go every single generation. Okay? Okay, so just to summarize everything, um, the ones that we will see the most are going to be autosomal versus X-linked and then those will be paired with a dominant or recessive. Those are almost 100% of the time is going to be our four choices. The mitochondria and the Y-link are fairly minor on the MCAT. Okay, so what we need to distinguish are these four points. Okay, so dominant versus recessive. What's the difference? Dominant never skips generations versus recessive. Um, it, it's allowed to skip generations. Autosomal versus X-linked. There's no bias for the in terms of sexes. How many males versus how many females get it? For X-linked, males are going to have it more than females. So there's definitely a, a bias in terms of which sex gets the disease more often. Okay, so as long as we can pair those up and we can distinguish between um, dominant recessive, autosomal, and X-linked, we'll be fine for the MCATs.